I've recently gotten a number of questions on how to set up LFOs inside of Cubase. People use LFOs to kind of rhythmically modulate or alter sound to make it a little more interesting. And it's kind of a common production technique. Some people will very methodically draw in automation to accomplish a task, but there's some automated ways that could really save your time in Cubase. So let's go ahead and take a listen to a song that could probably greatly benefit from some LFO. So we're gonna have a very simple bass, synth bass, a pad, and drums. So let's say if I wanted to look at my bass and we'll open the instrument here. And let's say as I play, we'll solo the bass. And I just wanted to simulate the sound of the filter opening and closing with a cutoff here. To kind of get that type of effect. But I don't want to have to automate that or draw it in. So what you want to do is to figure out what MIDI continuous controller message this responds to. And if you don't know what it is or you just want to make it up, you could go to your MIDI inserts and assign a MIDI control plugin. So let's say I want this to be controller 16. So I'm going to right click on a parameter and this is how Retrolog is set up in a lot of the Steinberg instruments and we can say learn CC. So now as I adjust the parameters here, just to the left, what I could do is just, as I adjust that, we've now assigned continuous controller 16 to control our cutoff. So I'm gonna close this plugin now that that's done and let's open up the auto LFO plugin. So what I want to do is to say under controller type, go to 16 and now it's going to open up the cutoff uh, basically with, you know, we could have different waveforms to quarter notes. And let's say I want to be an eighth note. Maybe an eighth note triplet. Or let's say 16th note. So if I wanted to bypass that, we had just very boring bass line. Now with the LFO, more interesting. So let's go ahead and look next at our synth pad. So we'll look at our pad. And as we wanted to open up this instrument, let's say we wanted this particular instrument to, we'll go ahead and open it up. And this is again, our instance of Retrolog. And I want to use my standard volume and panning. So I'm going to go to my MIDI inserts and let's go to our auto LFO plugin. And what I want to do is to say, I want the panning to go left to right in whole notes. So as we play, we'll just pan. And let's say if I wanted to set up a secondary LFO for volume, what I'm gonna do is just set this up to be MIDI CC7. So I can do quarter notes, eighth notes, or 16th notes. So we just took a pad sound and turned it into that. So bypass it and turning it back on. Now, sometimes you may have sound sources that don't actually respond to MIDI continuous controllers and different plugins. So let's say if I wanted to play back uh, my drums So now what I'm going to do is just go to my inserts and let's say I have a, like an old filter and I want it to be able to adjust and have an LFO for that particular filter position. So when I right click, not every plugin has MIDI CC learn. So what I'm going to do is we need to set up a uh, MIDI loopback. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this. On a Mac platform, you could use the audio MIDI setup and set up the IAC driver. And that's just a part of the operating system. On Windows, you may need to download a utility such as the Hoobies loopback MIDI driver. And that's what I use on PC. And what we're gonna do is, 
as we do this, we're going to set up a MIDI track here and we're going to have this MIDI track output to your loopback driver. So here I have it set to my IAC bus and on this blank MIDI track, I want to go to my MIDI inserts and let's set up an auto LFO. And as we have this set up, what I need to do now is to actually, we're going to play back our drums. I'm going to go to my studio menu to studio setup. If you have the previous versions of Cubase, it'll be your device menu to device setup. And we're going to add a generic MIDI remote control. So we click on the plus sign here. And then what we want to do is to say we're going to have MIDI continuous controller 10. And what we want to do is to assign this to the VST mixer to let's say our glitch drums track and under the value action, we're going to scroll down to our inserts where we have our dual filter and we're going to set this to position. And now we want to make sure that our MIDI input and output here is set to our IAC bus. So this will draw loop back and it will click on learn. And we can see now that the filter is responding to the alpha. So let's say I want to set this to maybe every two bars. So this is an easy way of being able to set up LFOs for plugins that don't respond to MIDI continuous controllers. So if we wanted to now listen to our pad. And as we want to listen to see how that's modulating, we can go back to our bass. See how that is modulating with our cutoff. We can see that how adding LFOs can take a song that's not as interesting and quickly add a nice spice to it to make it more interesting. And you can see how you can hear many productions that are contemporary using these types of techniques. And it's very easy to do inside of Cubase. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.